Okay, I have to say, it is without a doubt I live in a little world of my own. I can't say that I've honestly noticed COVID, apart from having to queue at the supermarket. But I did notice it recently because I wanted to order some carbon black-filled HDPE, which we use extensively in electrode manufacture, as I've shared. But I couldn't order any, because it's none coming through, and other people have been telling me they've been finding it difficult to order. In a previous video, I did show a technique of mixing graphite with um, crazy glue in order to get the same result. And that can be a little bit um, difficult because it goes off quite quickly and it is quite smelly because it's crazy glue. And I was written to by a friend who said um, he's having a problem, can I help him out? And I promised him I would make this video. Now, another way of doing this, that is infiltrating plastics with a carbon so you can get a resistive yet conductive coating on metal electrodes is to dissolve a plastic in a solvent. Now what I've got here is a, a thick syrupy liquid. That is 100 grams of polycaprolactone in 500 milliliters of dichloromethane. Now I've just mentioned dichloromethane which is obviously a fairly toxic solvent. So this is not something for the faint of heart and not for people really who are doing this a lot at home or in confined spaces. I personally like the smell of DCM, but you know, um, it's really for people who've got a fume cupboard, know how to handle the solvents and the chemicals. Lots of plastics will dissolve in lots of solvents, but to misquote George Orwell, all animals are equal, of course, but some animals are more equal than others. These plastics are stable to a degree. We're used to thinking of plastic in a, in a global sense as being one big thing that just never rots away, but it's not true. There are lots of different kinds of plastics with lots of different properties. And in some situations, the plastic that you choose will not be uh, able to resist the environment that you put it in. The only way to tell that is through experimentation. You've just got to uh, try it and see. Now, in a lot of things, when you're doing demonstrations of stuff, for example, Something that will last four or five cycles is good enough. If you want to do a home battery, you really need thousands of cycles, so it's going to take you a little bit of time to find that right plastic. Some plastics are next to impossible to dissolve with some terrible, terrible solvents to try and do it. Those, obviously, you're going to steer away from. This is why I chose polycaprolactone. Polycaprolactone dissolves in dichloromethane beautifully. You just add the two leave it for about, I don't know, eight, nine hours, give it a shake every time you pass by and you'll get this syrup. Um, ABS in acetone takes a little bit longer and you get a kind of a white syrup, but it still dissolves very nicely in acetone and that's a nice one to use. Other ones, are, 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 they're a bit more lethal, so probably better steering clear of or at least doing your research before you do them. Now the idea of putting a conductive particle into this is all about percolation threshold. So. When the plastic dries, it will shrink down. Any particles in there will get caught in that tangled web of plastic fibers and get pulled together to create a network of uh, conductive path network. You want to put the minimum requirement of conductive additive in there to create that network. That minimum requirement, uh, the weight at which you do that is called the percolation threshold. It's the amount of carbon that will allow that to occur. Any more than that really tends to be a bit more of a waste because you're really just destroying the nature of the plastic. It's a composite material. So at one end, it's going to have plastic behavior because it's 100% plastic. At the other end, it's going to have graphite behavior because it's 100% graphite. Somewhere in those um, percentages, as you have a greater percent of graphite, it will begin to go along to behaving more like graphite. And you want it somewhere in between. You want the plastic to be able to protect everything, but with just enough conductivity. You have to find that out by experimentation, I'm afraid. Now, I tend to do something along the lines of a bubble search. So I'll add something like 40%. If it works, I'll do 20%. If it still works, I'll do 10%. If it stops working there, I'll do 15%, and then 12.5%. So I go down onto that percentage of where it will actually work. And that's how I tend to find percentages. Now, I'm going to add 50 grams of carbon to this. So it's 100 grams of plastic, 50 grams of carbon, so it's 30% by weight conductive additive. I'm doing that because I'm expecting a result. I'm expecting it to be conductive. It won't be as insulating because it's 30% carbon, 
but it will be very conductive. We can find out what works, we can test it, we can see if it rots or not. If I were to chuck this powder in there, I would have a big sticky mess that I'd have to be stirring for absolutely ages in order to get the thing to mix. It's next to impossible to do that. <coughs> what I do is add a bit of solvent to the carbon prior to mixing it to wet the carbon. Now that solvent, remember, is all going to evaporate. So the ratio of solvent to the solids is not that important. You just really want enough to make it the consistency that you want so that it will dip coat nicely. Any um, thicker a consistency is going to have difficulty in application, any thinner a consistency, and you're effectively wasting the solvent. So I just give that a good mix through until everything's nice and mixed up. It mixes really easily, actually. And then we can add that straight to the mix that we've got here. There we go. And we get a relatively homogeneous mix. And you can see that it's coated the steel rod that I've just used actually rather nicely. We're getting a bit of dripping, but that's okay. If that were too thin, it would all run off and we'd get sharp edges. Too thick and we wouldn't get that nice coat. So that's actually quite nice. Now what I would normally do is put that lid back on, leave it again so everything distributes, give it a shake every now and then so that we have a nice mix. <coughs> but what I've got here is a bit of stainless steel mesh, and if I dip my stainless steel mesh in there, out it comes. And it coats itself in a plastic coat. We leave that to dry. And then we do that a couple more times so that we get a coating of that conductive plastic on our mesh that we then can use to uh, make electrodes, that kind of thing. Anyway, I was asked to share that. I hope it was of interest and of help. Um, we need to seal it back up, obviously. Otherwise, it will just evaporate away and we'll have a big chunky solid lump of graphitized plastic in there. So I put a bit of a rubber stopper on it and then back on with the lid and it seals it up nicely. We give that a bit of time to dry. It'll take a, uh, 20 minutes or so to evaporate, re-dip, evaporate, re-dip until you get the thickness of the coating that you want. Anyway, I hope that was of help. It's the same procedure, whatever material you use. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>